I am a supporter of Measure C. Um, I think it's a good thing. I believe that uh, I like the fact that it will go on to the voters and the voters will be able to make the final decision. But, you know, as has been mentioned up here already a couple of times, Hayward and other local governments have been being kicked around by the state of California quite a bit in recent years. And if we want to be able to maintain the services that the city of Hayward deserves, this is something that we need, in my opinion, especially just to tide us over. Um, you hear people up here talking about public safety, how important that is. Measure C is something we're going to need. If we're going to be able to get the staffing levels to where they need to be, this is something that we need. Um, when you talk to, when I go around talking to, um, knocking on doors, like I said, people are looking for these services to be maintained. And this, in my opinion, is the best way to go about it. So I am a, a strong supporter of Measure C, and I believe that police staffing levels should be first and foremost if Measure C is passed. We should make sure that that is where the focus is and those staffing levels and, and equipment for fire and police as well is brought to where it needs to be. Thank you, Ms. McKillop. Thank you. I think the operative word here is temporary. So I am a supporter of this measure to increase the funds coming into the city. It's very apparent that we need these monies to, to do some in infrastructure repair work, to keep our fire and police um, and their infrastructure and their places uh, that they stay um, in good working order. But again, I'd like to focus on the temporary nature of this because, again, um, I do believe that we need to find other ways to come uh, create revenues and improve the financial base of the city. And sales tax is a temporary measure. An increased sales tax is a temporary measure. So I would like to, again, focus on economic development and hopefully generate the finances we need to run the city effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lamden? Sure. I recently learned that there are nine officers on um, on the beat in the city of Hayward from 2 p.m. Sorry, from 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. Nine. We're a city of 150,000 people. Um, I found that rather alarming. But when I asked what would make us safer, what would be the right level, I was told 14 is actually a really good number. I bet we can figure out a way to get five more officers. Measure C may be the way to do that. I'm still considering that. Because honestly, absolutely, do we need to get more officers on the street? Sure. Do we need a new library? Of course we do. Do we need solar, the solar and um, other improvements that are part of that library design plan? Absolutely. We need a new fire station. We need a new police station. We need revenue that stays only in Hayward. At the same time, we need to be competitive. Raising a sales tax that makes our, area, our um, businesses one of the high, most expensive places to shop is a challenge. I'm really concerned. We are always talking about needing to support local businesses, needing to be attractive to people who make large purchases. And so if we become one of the highest sales tax revenues or sales tax expenses in the community, what does that do to us? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Christian? I'm against donating. Because we have plenty of tax. How much tax, 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 tax? People have no penny left in the account. And you're still cutting the job here. Even particularly this building. In this building, that much taxes you have, where is the money going? That's why I'm running as a mayor. Like 2010, Jerry Brown, you guys support him. Who got the benefit? And you guys know it's very good too. Behind the scene, who is there? That's the one we have to look for it. And you guys need to be understand in 2010, the billionaire guy, they say, he promote the, increase the taxes, one person. And we, American citizen, we approve it. Because we listen all the crybaby. Oh, we need this one, we don't have no money, we don't have no money. Then don't build the, Somewhere else, something. Think about our neighborhood. Like our veteran need help too. That's the one you have to think about it. It's not always just thinking that, oh, we are broke, we are broke, we are broke. <coughs> you need to be invent something so 
money can come. And it's, it's that's the easy things. Like earlier I told you, like uh, I was challenged like that. When I was in the bank, I challenged like that too also. Bank can open one account, I open 100. So you need to have some planning. You need to have some relation. You need to have some public contact. So we can take care of everything. Our veteran, we can take care of it. Those are things important. Not the just killing the people like that, uh, that uh, give them burden like that. Oh, we, we, are bro we are broke. Who is suffering? Middle class. Then how are you going to be develop everything? <coughs> then no, no, no money to spend. Every penny count. Thank you. Mr. Semenyo. So a half cent for 10 years from the Serenio family is certainly nothing that uh, we will cry about or we will uh, feel sad about. It's something that it would, that would mean, will mean er, an investment in our city. So that's certainly something very important. Uh, we have 190 police officers for a city of 150,000 people. That's too few. Our firefighters have to do tower training in the city because the tower that we have is not adequate for their training, and that certainly doesn't bode well for your safety and their safety. We have a fire station with mold and, and falling uh, 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 roof. That's certainly not very good for our union brothers who are living out there. That's not at all. Uh, nine beats, yes, that's too few. I live in nine in beat number two, and my police officer on occasion is uh, quite busy. Uh, a top-notch library, like the one we want to build, uh, will mean economic vitality because studies have been done to show that a top-notch library in downtown drives the economy, more people read. A top-notch library certainly will be something that will be very useful and practical to the many students that we have, to the future Chabot College students, to the future Cal State students. That's quite a few. That's 30,000 in those two uh, post-secondary institutions plus the other 20,000 that we have in HUSD. That's something that we need to ensure that we can have. That's more or less a vision, and that's something that I will propose, and I certainly will uh, knock on doors and work on. So we do need this one half cent for the next 10 years. I think it's an investment on the city of Hayward so that we can, we're this close to greatness in the city of Hayward. Let's do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holliday. Oh, wait a minute, my time's not up. 263 streets, 263 miles of streets in Hayward. That's amazing and we need to fix them. I don't disagree with that. Uh, I am also um, supporting Measure C, the half cent sales tax. Uh, one of the things that, one of the ways we have been balancing our budget for the last many years is deferring some significant infrastructure uh, and maintenance needs that we have, and we need to address them. I don't think we can ask more of our workers at this point. Um, we have looked for every way we can to save money in this city, and I think we've done a good job of that. And in, in some ways, in the beginning, I thought the recession was somewhat good because it did force us to do that, and you can always do things more efficiently, but I think we may have reached our limit almost on that, too. So um, this money will stay in Hayward and be used to enhance the quality of life for all of us. I support building a new 21st century library to replace our uh, mid 20th century library that is truly outdated. Our library does um, and its staff do such good work in our community. This is a community that needs that kind of a learning center. It, it is a place where all, many of us of all education levels and all income levels come together to learn from each other and to teach each other and it is a wonder to see it I think that it, it does represent what our community is and what is great about it. I think it's the kind of thing that will help us attract new economic development to support our budget better. So yes, I think we need to do this investment. I know it's hard to ask. and. I, I promise, though, um, I, I, I really think that every one of us up here is dedicated to making sure that that money is used efficiently and effectively to do things that are really going to benefit all of us. So yes, I do support 
the half cent sales tax. The mayor has pointed out um, just the other day, I heard him speaking five, probably five or six million dollars a year is what we have lost in the last, say, 10 to 20 years from various state schemes to take away. And that is, and I'm not even including the redevelopment dissolution in that. So I think we need this. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. <clears throat> uh, yes, I also support uh, Measure C. Um, we're a city of 150,000 people. And on any given school day, like today, we have 60,000 students sitting in classrooms from preschool to grad school. That is 41% of our city's population is in a classroom. And so a 21st century library, I think, is most appropriate and most fitting for a school, for a city that has 41% of its citizens as a student. You know, the other uh, reason why I support Measure C is that, you know, it would really stimulate our economy in downtown. Um, I think that with, um, with a new library, it will bring people on BART. It will bring people from downtown or from uh, all of the surrounding neighborhoods into our downtown. I think all of the other businesses would certainly benefit with more people uh, in uh, coming our downtown. Uh, we'll bring more families to downtown. We're going to bring more students to downtown. So we're going to start to see a much, uh, a much more active uh, group uh, or a much more active uh, activity in downtown just by virtue of building a library uh, in our downtown. <clears throat> the other reason why I'm supporting this is that we don't have a whole lot of public spaces to meet. This is going to be a great public conference center and, and a great uh, addition to our downtown. And, and that's something that's sorely needed uh, in our downtown. Uh, secondly, you know, I, or uh, another issue is, you know, I would be remiss uh, in that uh, mentioning that, you know, the folks up in Parkview, uh, on Home Street, and on Grandview over up in the Hayward Hills, they desperately, desperately need a new road up there. And so um, with uh, the revenues from Measure C, it will enable us to uh, in, you know, b either build a new road or enhance the roads that they have up there today. So I think altogether, Measure C will benefit the city. Thank you. Mr. Gallegos? So I am, in fa I am in favor of this tax because this tax is like medication to an unhealthy person. Um, if you're sick, you take your medication because you need it no matter how much it costs. Um, and you hope that the cost is not too much. And in this case, a half cent is a drop in the bucket for most of us as we shop. But in the accumulation of those drops, it can make a difference here. and make us a healthier community, make us a healthier city. Um, while we're in this recovery of trying to spend that money, I also want to focus on what a, when you're sick and you're trying to recover, you don't go out for your morning jog if that's what you do, you don't go to work. And so we have to also think, if we're not a healthy city, because we're cutting employees' pays, we're cutting back, we need to think about what we should do as an unhealthy city. How do we need to recover quickly? The best way to recover quickly is to not only bring in the tax, but to, to prioritize where the spending is also going to go. And so I'm in favor for the tax, but we also have to be responsible about how that money is going to be spent. Um, so you know, before we start promising um, certain neighborhoods new roads or you know, any specifics, I mean, they're all great things. The city needs everything. But we need to kind of combine what we all need and what we all um, would like to see in our future and really plan where the money needs to go one step at a time. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fernandez? Uh, I'm supporting Measure C, and I hope all of you will as well. Uh, I think it's a really amazing opportunity to do a lot of the things we've been wanting to do. Um, first off, making sure that we're shoring up public safety. It's a huge quality of life issue that affects every single one of us. And we need to make sure we're continuing to make good investments in that uh, so that we have the, the protection and, and the safety that we need to be able to do everything else that we want to do. Um, I, I'm excited because this is money that's going to be raised locally and invested locally. In the past, we've been hit pretty hard, it's true, but 
we like to pick ourselves up here in Hayward, uh, go out to the voters, make a case for why this is necessary, and we tend to pass these things, and I'm hoping that that, that uh, moves forward with Measure C as well. I'm most excited about the, the library, and I hope we get that going. Uh, everything I'm talking about in terms of, of uh, 21st century economics, libraries are, are coming back in a big way, and they're creating not necessarily stacks of books, but shared technologies and facilities for some of these collaborative spaces that people want. And I think it, the location that we're looking at is going to be perfect for doing that and really becoming an economic engine for us. Um, and I want to get back to the uh, fact that it's going to be money invested locally and, and things that we get to make choices on. Uh, at AC Transit, we had a policy of buying buses overseas. We uh, took, some, took some thought about it. Toward the Gillig plant, we passed some uh, policies that changed our official policies at AC Transit to buy locally, uh, and we do. We now have AC Transit now has Gillig purchase buses. Uh, that's an exciting thing. I'm hoping we get to continue to do that with Hayward, and I think it's a big part of uh, of our recovery. Thank you, Mr. Pichot. Thank you. I'm also a supporter of Measure C. If you've ever been down to Fire Station Number Seven at Huntwood in Tennyson, you'll see that it's made of four modular buildings that are now separating to the point where if you walk into one of those buildings you can see the carpet dipping down between the cracks. Uh, originally it was used to house the firefighters while they were building fire station number one in the downtown. So it's long seen its time and I think it's important to uh, give to the people in South Hayward, not just a good fire station that provides them with fire safety services, but the addition of the Tuberculo Vasquez Clinic that will be attached there and run by Tuberculo Vasquez and provide needed medical services to the people in South Hayward. It's a worthwhile tax. Uh, I do worry and I am concerned a little bit about voter fatigue with these half cent sales taxes. Uh, we have, as you know, one coming up with the Alameda County Transportation Commission in November for uh, renewing Measure B. It's called Measure B3, which I also support. You still have the county's Highland Hospital uh, sales tax. And, uh, you know, were it not for one of my colleagues on ACTC, Ursula, uh, Elsa Ortiz, we might have had an AC Transit half cent sales tax in November, but she was able to persuade her colleagues on the AC Transit Board to hold off on that for a while. So I am concerned with all these taxes, uh, and I'm concerned that the accumulation of these taxes might have uh, an impact on the local economy. Um, we're going to have the UUT expire in a couple of years, and I'm concerned uh, about uh, the passage of that uh, tax as well. Thank you. This question I will ask for one minute response uh, as we're getting towards the eight o'clock hour. Uh, and I will start with you, Mr. Salinas, because the uh, it's always the last person that doesn't quite seem fair, so we're going to reverse the order. Here's a question. A critical component for a successful community is its schools. What would you do to help improve our schools? <clears throat> well, you know, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, I have been uh, the one talking about uh, an education city vision for uh, a long time. And I plan on, and what I intend on doing is, uh, I wanna bring some of our most innovative companies and our innovative leaders in those companies into our classrooms. Uh, and I wanna take our, our students, K from, from uh, kindergarten to graduate school, and put our students into um, these innovative places and with these innovative people um, it, while school is in session and while school isn't in session. Um, you know, through, uh, through curriculum, uh, linking curriculum uh, to um, uh, clean tech, green tech, uh, innovation work. Uh, and if we can put some of these creative thinkers in our classrooms and link the curriculum that it's relevant, making sure that the curriculum is relevant, then we can have these great rich exchanges between um, our uh, industry and our students. Same thing with, uh, with, our, uh, with our college and universities 
students so that when they graduate from college and when they graduate from the university that they can have a, a, a relationship already established and that they can have uh, a career pathway already established in some of these careers, uh, uh, specifically around STEM careers. Thank you. Ms. Holliday? Well, I like to think that I'm not just talking about it, I'm doing it. And that is, uh, I have been a volunteer for four years in the city's after school homework support center. And I can't say enough about this program and what I believe it is doing to help uh, raise uh, our test scores. And um, when we first started it, it was uh, in our just out of our two libraries, but we're now working closely with the school district. We have a cooperative partner um, and we're expanding it to, we have already expanded it to several school sites and I'd like to see it expanded to every school site site in the city. This actually does also bring in the assets that we have in the, with the two colleges, Chabot and Cal State. Um, most of the volunteers now in that program are students and they're learning their teaching skills if that's what they want to do in life and the students are benefiting from you know from working with them and and probably they like working with some of them better than somebody like me who's much older, but I also would like to very much encourage people like me to get into those schools and to spend some time doing this tutoring. It is a very valuable experience, and I'm sorry I don't have time to talk about more because there's a lot that we can do to help our students. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Ms. Emanuel. Uh, so business and education is very important. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I am working or I, also, I introduced the city of Hayward to take its, our airplane, our airport and unite with Chabot College in order to create airport classes, uh, uh, airport or that is uh, plane uh, fueling classes, plane f uh, flight classes. So this has never been, ha this has never happened before. So now it's happening because what I've done. So I've taught for 38 years, 35 at Chabot College. What we need is a marriage, a collaborative of business and education so that the educators, us, can then educate the correct people for the businesses. That's why the chamber needs to form a collaborative so that uh, this collaborative will also tell Chabot College uh, what kind of students we need from HUSD. And then Cal State can then tell us what kind of students they need to transfer. If we don't have this collaborative of businesses and parents and uh, educators, we'll never get anywhere. And that's what's missing. Thank you. Mr. Christian? Yes, sir. Education. The number one, like I told you earlier, prior, in our Hayward I, no math science teacher, not even English teacher. That's number one. And number two is there. Innovation is a good idea too, but it's 97% budget wipe out too also. You need the skill, like the new technology right now, like computers, science, that one is important. Software engineer, that's important. Because the whole system is changing. Everything is in the life of the click button. So those kind of system, kids will learn early, starting with the fifth grade. They need to be learn how to do all this thing operating. But those things are very easy. Like uh, earlier, uh, all candidates say is that oh, we can build up the library good. You know, computer is just like a library. How we organize the book. Like when you can walk in library. Oh. Thank you. Ms. Lamnon? Sure. How do we improve the schools? It's through partnerships. I'm proud to have the endorsement of both uh, school, board, school board members and hard members. And it is that kind of partnership that is going to move our students forward. We can do concrete things. We have the Exceptional Access Hayward system, which is about facilitating communication about city issues. We could simply put a link about school issues so that they go to our esteemed um, superintendent. Um, we can create internships throughout this community, leverage our volunteer Hayward program to make sure that every industry, whether it be faith communities, high tech, um, food manufacturing, government, has training opportunities for youth to get the practical skills. So they're not just graduating with a degree, but they're graduating with experience, making them more hireable and desirable for employers. We can make sure that we have business incubation op opportunities. The crepe place that was here um, just nearby was a great store. It was a Hayward story. Um, they graduated here. They grew up here. And the business didn't, didn't thrive. 
they needed the support of the community to make that happen. We could facilitate those kinds of places. We need to make sure that our Wi-Fi is working throughout our city so that the digital divide isn't such an issue, that we can leverage our community contacts to make sure that um, technology is available. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McKillop? Yes. I mean, I hear a lot about <clears throat> collaboration, and that is the absolute key, but I also think one of the things we really need to do is strongly support our school board and give them what they need to create the programs that they need in our uh, schools here in, in Hayward. But collaborative is so important. Uh, collaborating with the community, business, and the universities. Making sure our students are fed with the kids' breakfast program. That is just, the kids', kids Breakfast Club is an excellent um, community organization that helps keep our children fed and able to pay attention to school um, and give it their best efforts. Um, Promise Neighborhoods is a federally funded program administered through Cal State here locally, and I'm very proud to have been uh, part of that. And what that does is it funds and it creates opportunities for students and uh, at the university level to go down and actually work in the neighborhood elementary schools and create them and clean them up and give them the resources they need to really, really come into this um, century with respect to what they have to offer. So we were down at Park School and we were able to clean it, spent a whole weekend down there and it was a wonderful thing. So to continue those collaborations is the way that we're going to be able to bring our students up to par. Thank you. Mr. Lachey? Yeah, it is, it is about collaboration. Uh, I agree. Uh, we need to make better use of the resources we already have in this city. We have higher education, Cal State East Bay, Chabot, City of Hayward, Hayward Unified, all need to be working closer together. And uh, truthfully, it's already being done in other cities. The, the, the city of Long Beach in the early 90s started a program called the Seamless Education Foundation. And in the early 90s, their school district was terrible. And Honestly, there's a lot of similarities between Long Beach and Hayward. There's very diverse communities, Long Beach. There are a lot of English as a second language learners. And through that partnership that they put together, they were able to really put together a model school district that they have now. What they used, they had Long Beach State, they had Long Beach Community College, City of Long Beach, and Long Beach Unified, working together to make concrete changes. They didn't just come together and chat once a month. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, well, I can't get to it. But they made concrete changes to it, and um, I have to leave it there. Thank you. Mr. Pichot? Thank you. Uh, you know, I really don't know what's going on in our schools. I don't know why we have poor uh, API performance. And maybe that's the problem. We measure it with API. Uh, and I know things have changed since when I was in school. Of course, I had two parents in uh, at home telling me to do my homework and I would imagine a lot of the problems lies in the fact of uh, some of these socioeconomic issues that plaguing some of the people particularly in South Hayward I know a lot of these kids grew up with single parents and those single parents are still dealing with the day-to-day -day struggle of making a living and uh, don't really have the uh, enough time to spend as my mother and father did with me to do the homework. But I'll tell you what I really like, I'm really excited about, is Stan Dobbs. This guy brings tremendous energy to the job. And I've talked to him about my concern about schools in Hayward and how important it is for us as a city council to have good performing schools. I like his Made in Hayward project. Uh, it, it, it instills a lot of confidence in the kids. And the lights are out. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> All right. I don't need to be hit over the head. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mr. Fernandez. Uh, I believe that it is the city's council, city council's job to uh, do several things to make sure that, that our schools are strong. First, it's infrastructure. We have to make sure that the roads, pathways to get to school and learn are safe, they're maintained. Uh, that's, that's a big thing. We also have to make sure that the infrastructure going into schools is strong enough to support all those computers and all the new technology that's going to be necessary for our common core and some of the testing that has to go on. I've heard from teachers that they, they can't 
plug in that many things into the wall because there's not enough plugs. We have to make sure that we're, uh, we're giving the school district the ability to go ahead and modernize their schools to be prepared for those things. Another thing we have to do is make sure that we have good jobs and a strong safety net for the parents out there so that they can spend some of that time making sure their kids get educated and spend the time that I think uh, a lot of us benefited from in, in having our parents there to help us. Uh, that's not there for everybody, and we need to make sure that that safety net is there to, so that they have that time. And another thing we need to do is, is work with nonprofits and organizations so that uh, we have uh, those programs that, that they can learn with. And it's really all of our job to improve the schools here in, in Hayward. Thank you. Mr. Gallegos? Hi. So my father made it to the third grade. My mother made it to the seventh grade. And growing up in Hayward, I just remember one of my earliest, my earliest memory was my mom, who worked at the cannery, taking me to a preschool and finding out she, we couldn't afford it as a family. So I ended up staying home with my siblings. And what I want to talk about is the, we all know that the first five years are very crucial. And I think that it, the whole first five California is a big deal because in the, the start, is where we need to kind of focus. If parents don't already have a mentality that education's important, that college is important, as I grew up, my parents kept saying, work hard, work hard, and basically told me, we can't afford to ever send you to college, so don't count on it. And I think if we had parents who encouraged their kids because they were encouraged first, we needed to start programs that speak to the parents so that in the home, these kids are getting the mentality before they even go to school, that they're getting the support. So that's where we need. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'd like to thank the audience for uh, submitting your questions. It seems like the bulk of the questions from you regard, is regarding the Hayward Loop, the downtown loop, <laughs> <laughs> which is no surprise. Uh, so uh, this will be a question regarding the Hayward Loop. And I will start with you, uh, Ms. Holliday, with this question. What is your opinion of this, or success, or, let me rephrase it. What is your opinion of the success or failure of the downtown loop? If it is a failure, what would you do to fix it? Actually, I, I think that it is a success. Um, I think it has caused some problems I have asked, and we are doing a, going to do a study, and we will look and see what we can fix. I'd like to talk a little bit about how we got there, because I think people don't recognize that this issue goes back many years, um, and a judge in a courtroom told uh, opponents of the freeway that was supposed to be built through the foothills that they could not use the money that was authorized, that they thought they were going to be able to use to build that freeway because the voters approved a project to alleviate traffic along Mission and Foothill, Cor the, along Mission and Foothill. And, um, and in fact, when I started on the council and for years before that, all I heard people do was complain about the traffic. And fr from my side of town, it was often impossible to get into town from, you know, on Jackson Street. You would just sit there. And so something did need to be done. Now, I know people don't like one-way streets, but this project took less right of way than any other proposal, and it can be changed if it needs to be, but it is moving the traffic better, and I've, I have heard a lot of favorable comments from people who like it. Thank you, Mr. Zemeno. Hi, uh, it it's not a failure to me. Uh, we are tweaking it, and of course we can always study it, and if anything needs to be done, we could always talk about getting back uh, 1A to uh, A Street to two-way traffic. All I know is that my son now goes to the movies in Hayward as opposed to Union City because it's faster for him to get to the parking lot behind cinema than it is to Union City as it was be before. It was really a long, long time. Um, the, there have been some tweaks made to it. The left turn lane or the left lane going east of a mission has now been extended, so that's certainly something that's positive. Um, we can always take what we have and just improve it. It's such a new thing that people are getting used to it. That's what it is. I know that at least 32 people stopped and tasted wine. Not all at the same time, of course. <laughs> at Doc's Wine Shop, because this bus kept passing by this and noticing Doc's Wine Shop. So little by little, every one of those 
32 passengers stopped and tasted wine because of that particular route. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Christian. It's go both way. I believe it's look beautiful, success. But the problem, the failure, they have to understand before do any infrastructure major change. And city is supposed to know, understand. There's a liability. Infrastructure is liability. City need to be think that one. And the over cost budget, they pass it to that make the loophole and loophole not even completely fix yet. Is same road, same everything, everywhere road is broken. On Mission Boulevard you can see, crack is everywhere. Go on the Simon Street, crack is everywhere. So they have to think, when you spend the, that much money, you know infrastructure is a liability. Bottom line, they never think. That is the reason they want more taxes for you. So there is something going on behind the scene. That the one, here will need to be wake up. They're going to tell, they're going to cry baby, they're going to say, oh, we need the taxes, we need to, because you, you have everything. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Lamna? Thank you. thank you. And thanks for asking the question that is my third priority. So thank you for coming back to that. Um, we have to be able to get not just through Hayward, but to be able to stop and shop and stop and live and go to school safely and securely. Now, I live by Carlos B. and it is much improved to be able to get up the hill. Um, there's still some traffic on the hill for the university. But um, I've also tried to come from the freeway to get to D Street and taken my life in my hands. So we need to look at the timing of, those, um, of that intersection where Jackson and um, Mission come together. It's definitely dangerous and I'm, that's a high priority. We need to study the impact on our businesses. Have, now that the construction is done, has the revenue come back or has it not? Do we have enough parking? What's going on to make sure that our, our city is safe and then also that our business is supported? And most of all, we need to get good signage. Um, I can't tell you, yeah, I'm still learning the way, but we also need signage that says, if you want to go to 580, you need to be in this lane now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ms. McKillop? Yes, um, I think the general improvement to the city and the way it looks visually is really, really one of the high points of the loop. Um, you look at what's happening on Mission Boulevard. It's not just in the downtown. It's Mission Boulevard also. Now, I do realize and recognize the traffic issues and people coming to <clears throat> together from Jackson and trying to get over to B Street, it is, you feel like you're in a bumper car arena. There is some work that needs to be done, and I know traffic is, your, the department here in the city of Hayward is looking at it and make, coming up with recommendations. But I think overall, as we get through this, it'll be one of the best things that's happened to the downtown in a long time, if we can solve these problems. Thank you, Mr. Lachey. Yes, I am. Um I was not a supporter of the loop, um, something I did not think was, was, was a good thing. I believe that it was put in place for the benefit of people going through our downtown at the expense of people who are going to our downtown, and it needs to be changed. It's here now, so we owe it to ourselves and to our city to try and make it work the best we can. Um, one is definitely, as was just mentioned, the merge from, from Jackson and Mission yeah, you're definitely taking your life in your hands. So we have to look at fixing that, whether we need to stagger the lights or do what we can so people can get over and make the turns we're trying to make. We also need to try and make it a lot more walkable. Um, that's been a priority for our city, is more walkable neighborhoods. But in the downtown, we made it less walkable. So we need to look at ways that we can, we can, we can address that issue. Um, and, and we really just need to sit down with downtown businesses who are negatively impacted and talk about ways to mitigate the, the negative impact on those businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bichelt. The loop contradicts everything we're trying to do in the downtown. You know, the loop is not about Hayward. It's about getting people from Oakland and the city down to their homes in Fremont and Union City five minutes faster. Everybody knows when you want to develop a downtown, you look for destination traffic, not through traffic. You don't want people driving through and going, oh, what a beautiful cinema. You want them to stop and you want them to shop. And I have a problem with 
the way we view some of these issues almost as a standalone discrete item. We had a traffic problem, let's build a highway right through the middle. Many of you have seen me on the council refer to this portion of uh, A Street and Mission as the beginning of the Indy 500. <laughs> you cannot have and create a pedestrian friendly environment with a five lane highway going right smack down the middle of your city. It just doesn't make sense. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of the loop for a few reasons. I like I said, I run a place down here, um, just a couple blocks away, so I experience this every single day. And yeah, there's there's a few reasons why. One, uh, I have to circle around a couple extra blocks to get places whenever parking's taken up. That's more vehicle miles travel. That's against what we're trying to do. Uh, we want a more walkable area. One-way streets are the antithesis of trying to get to walkable communities and smart growth. And you know, we like the investment in the signage. It's very nice, and I think it's it's really good for the downtown. Um, but I think we need to be looking at smarter ways of doing these things and, and moving traffic around. Uh, I think Google's going to give that answer with their self-driving cars in the next 10 years, so maybe it solves itself on its own. But uh, the reality is right now, we have a lot of challenges because of the loop, and I think we're not getting the, the safe, walkable, uh, smart growth community downtown that we're looking for. Thank you. Mr. Gallegos? So, I mean, I'm, I think the loop is more attractive than it used to be, and it's, it's an improvement because it was really bad before, so we still went from really bad to it's, it's pretty. Um, but that's not good enough. Um, I think that when I looked at the website of the development, it made you kind of have this impression there were going to be outdoor seating for restaurants and there was going to be these really wide sidewalks and it was going to be this wonderful place to just walk up and down the street shopping and, and living outdoors. But it doesn't have a feeling of a place I want to live outdoors. It feels like I'm on the side of a freeway and I do not want to live there. I'm going to go hide on B Street where it feels more pedestrian friendly. And if your business is on Foothill, I'm sorry. And so that, that's my thought on the whole loop. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Salinas. <clears throat> I haven't uh, spoken to one merchant in downtown on B Street that really likes the loop. And, you know, it has really impacted uh, a lot of the downtown merchants in there. Uh, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, I live in downtown. And, you know, on any given uh, morning uh, or in, uh, in uh, right after, um, you know, and during commute hours, I'm now being honked at to pull into my driveway because I'm disrupting someone's 50 mile an hour travel down Montgomery Street <laughs> and, you know, and so and Peralta and Western. I, all of these are now the side streets. So what the what the loop has done, it has forced uh, traffic into the downtown neighborhoods. B Street, Upper D Street, C Street are now small, uh, fast pathways to get to the 580 or the 238. And so, you know, um, you know what was interesting is that a, a year ago, a month ago, I guess, a year ago, a month, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask if any candidate wish to uh, have a minute of rebuttal to anything that was said. If not, we will move to the closing statement. All right, I see none. We will move to the closing statement. The closing statement is this. Wrap up what you have said. And I'd like to add a little twist to this. You could also include talk a little bit about who your major endorsements are, if you wish. And I will start with you, Mr. Semenyo. You have two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yes. All right. So uh, for 35 years, I have diligently and constantly and seriously uh, participated in the Hayward way of life. This is my adopted city because I want to make sure that it's the correct city for you for, and for my family. Uh, as a father, as a husband, as an educator, as a community activist and participant, as a business owner for 25 years, and as a city planning commissioner for, uh, for eight years and a city councilman, I have worked, I work, and I will continue to work uh, to make every day 
uh, a Hayward Day, to make Hayward Day the best possible city because you deserve the best from our city, from, our, from us, our, your leaders. Um, I love the city. I have adopted this city. Was for, and this is one city where our kids grew up, where our kids were born, right at the Kaiser Hospital. Um, we are this close to having a great city. We have a very fine city, but we're just a little bit close, and we're going to be almost over the hill. All right, I'm ready to lead our city um, because I believe that we can do it together. I want us all to be happy in, in Hayward with the right public safety, with the right amount of education, with the right amount of economy, so we can all walk and bicycle and shop. And shop Hayward first, please. Uh, work and live in Hayward. Very, very important. And I do want to take this opportunity to thank uh, APAP for hosting this and the Neighborhood Watch for hosting this. Uh, certainly hope I can get support. Uh, mainly I am supported by families of Hayward, by educators of Hayward, by many business owners of Hayward because they've seen me out in the streets, they've seen me visiting their shops and actually patronizing their shops, buying something and then offering my hand. How can I help you improve? And that's very, very important. So June 3rd, Cermeño. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Much. Christian. First of all, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, for my endorsement, I ask you, you are my endorsement. Hayward is my priority because Hayward is going to be, give me the biggest opportunity to solve the problem for deficit. And I will prove myself that how I will bring the new businesses and what the big business, I will give them tax breaks so they can open the business. I try to get the SBA loan I try to be do all. So the new small businesses coming to Hayward, so we can improve our city, so we can get the tax break too also. That's number one. And number another one over here, my education, particular, I got the experience in Hayward. This Hayward High is most teacher. So I will make sure the education is go better. Our schools get recognized. So ultimately, people will notice it. California notice it, America notice it, while we notice it. That we have the good uh, schools. When it's good schools, people can come and move into our town. So we can solve all the problem. We can solve the problem residential. We can solve the problem for commercial. We can make our city much better. And that's why I'm asking you, Please endorse me and put me as a mayor. I ask you for what? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Lamnon. Thank you. Hayward is a beautifully disjointed jigsaw puzzle. We have amazing um, capacity in the city. We have a nonprofit, we have 700 nonprofits in this community. We have faith communities, we have businesses, we, have, we are one of the most diverse places in the country. We have an internationally recognized university. We have vocational education, on and on and on. Well, I'm really good at jigsaw puzzles. I want to be able to bring the pieces together. I know I can do it. I have the experience to do it. And I can make the tough decisions. It's a trite phrase, but it's true. So on June 3rd, I hope you will consider me and join with the faith communities, the businesses, the elected officials, the labor, and on and on, who have supported me. You can learn more about me, of course, at sarahlamnon.com. And I hope that I can count, your, count on your support. My name is Sarah Lamnon, and I'd be proud to be your city council member. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McKillop. Thank you. Should I be elected to council? This is what I would like to do. I'd like to help create a vision of what this city can be and what it deserves to be and needs to be and lead to that goal. I've heard uh, council speak of passive development. Now what is passive development? Well passive development is you sit there and you wait for some project, somebody to come up and tell you what they want to do for your city. 
To me, that's not the way to run it. You have a vision. You're proactive. You go out. You figure out how it's done. You find a city that's done it. You talk to them. How did you get it done? And you bring that done, damn, back. And you are actually creating your vision that way. You're not waiting for random projects that may be fit into your plan to come by. You actively go out and search these things through. And I have done that in practice. I have built these um, companies and this restaurant across the street. I know how to get things done. I come from a place of creativity and hope. And I've shown this. I would like to be my mantra should I be elected to council, find a way and get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lachey? Uh, thank you. Um, me and my wife made a conscious decision to raise our children here in Hayward. And it's because, you know, Hayward has a, a wonderful personality to it. Um, Hayward is known as a city that takes care of one another. Here is known as a very diverse, welcoming community, whether it be racial or cultural or by age, what have you. Very welcoming, very diverse. Here is becoming known as a artsy city. If you look at all the beautiful murals around the city, we're, we're getting to be known for that. And these are some of the things that my wife and I were, you know, we love about our city. Now, you know, the downside is there are some things that are not part of our city that need to be. We are not known as a very business-friendly city, and that needs to change. We need to become more of a business-friendly city. Uh, it's well documented that our school district struggles. That's something that we need to work on to become part of our city. So my goal if I'm, a, if I'm elected to council, is that we can work on those things that are not currently part of our personality while we hold on to those wonderful things about our city that we all love. I, um, I'm proud to say I'm endorsed by the Hayward Firefighters 1909, Hayward Police Officers Association, Hayward Mobile Homeowners Association, Hayward Mayor Michael Sweeney, Hayward City Council Members Al Mendel, Greg Jones, former council members Kevin Dowling, um, Doris Rodriguez, Olden Henson, Bill Ward, um, wow, hard board members, Dennis Swaspy, Menan Jamison, numerous boards and commissioners, the majority of the Hayward Planning Commission, and I think all these folks support me because they know I'm a consensus builder. They know I'm somebody who will reach across the issue, whatever that issue may be, work with folks on the other side of that issue to move Hayward forward. My name is Rodney Lochet. I really hope you'll consider supporting me on June 3rd. Thank you all for coming out here tonight. Thank you. Mr. Pichelt. Thank you. For the last four years, I've been honored and privileged to serve as your Hayward City Councilman. And my roots run deep in the city of Hayward. I was born one block north of here, 770 A Street, in the old Hayward Hospital. My family was raised in the Val Vista area of Hayward. They owned the Rock Quarry right above Tennyson. We have a school named after us, the Peshot Elementary School on Roos Road. I have my bachelor's and master's degrees from Cal State Hayward. I love this city. Four years ago, I pledged that I would put Hayward on track towards fiscal sustainability, economic growth, and neighborhoods, and safer neighborhoods. Today, I am proud to have presided over four balanced budgets achieved through a combination of organizational changes, efficiencies, and the prudent use of our reserves. Hayward has a new fresh look along the Mission Boulevard in the downtown. Business has improved with new restaurants like Agua y Farina and Big Five Sporting Goods. Overall, crime is down in the city. Our police department is focusing on neighborhood hot spots where they detect gang uh, violence. Our special duty unit uses sophisticated data gathering techniques to locate these gang members. We now have a bicycle patrol in the downtown and the merchants and the customers really love it. So I think through hard work, Hayward has turned the corner. But we need leaders that have the courage to take stuff, tough stands on the issues that confront us. 
despite the criticism that comes from some of the special interest groups. I hope you consider me a person of that type of courage, and I hope you consider voting to reelect me this June 3rd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Thank you all for being here tonight. My name is Rocky Fernandez, and I look forward to taking on the challenges of Hayward. I'm looking forward to modernizing our economy, creating more of a, a startup, uh, an entrepreneurial uh, economy right here, which I think we have to do for the future, and improving our education. So we don't just educate people, but we attract and retain them here in Hayward. That's why I have the support of the Hayward Chamber of Commerce. I have members of the school board and the community college endorsing me. I also think that we can do these things, and by doing these things, we can grow our revenues, balance our budget, and make sure that we're doing so while respecting our workers. That's why I have the endorsement of SEIU and the Hayward Demos and a lot of other good progressives. I also believe that our city can and has to become smarter itself. We can improve our, our infrastructure, transportation-wise and education-wise. We can grow the kinds of housing and small businesses from the ground up. And this is why I have the support uh, of several AC Transit directors. I have East Bay Regional Park District directors, Assemblymember Bob Wachowski and former Assemblymember Johan Clays supporting me. I went to AC Transit and I believe that I made it a better agency and a smarter agency. I'm looking at doing the same thing now for my city that I grew up in. My name is Rocky Fernandez. I hope you'll support me for Hayward City Council and thank you all. Let's all make this happen together. Thank you. Mr. Gallegos? So, my name is Philip Gallegos, um, and I'm a father of two preschool age young girls, and so I have my desire to make Hayward a better place for them. I have, like, a, an obligation to them and to the whole community to make education better, to make Hayward safer, to make uh, the quality of life for us better and when my daughters get through school and go off to college I want Hayward to still remain a place for my wife and I where we could have a good quality of life uh, even if we're here as seniors we want to be able to live in a senior friendly environment we want to have the types of lifestyles that are worth your golden years um, so I want to push towards the education. I want to make Hayward a greener place for the, to also, not just for tightening a budget, but for the environment. Um, I believe that technology could replace paper. Um, I myself have my own website, philipgallegos.com, which represents my candidacy. And I believe that technology could work towards a lot of areas in, in this office where we could go paperless, we could work towards reducing cost, reducing waste, and, and also be more efficient. And so I'd like to see Hayward become a more highly tech place um, f for education, for business, and also for the way we run things. Um, so vote for me if you, have the, um, if you believe in my beliefs, if you support the arts, because I've been working with the Hayward Arts Council and the Sun Gallery, and together with them, um, Hayward has really been developing into a, an attractive arts community, a place of culture, and um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Mr. Salinas? Well, it's uh, quite an honor and a privilege to be uh, standing up here, or sitting up here. Um, unlike uh, my other two colleagues, I'm the guy that's running from an unsafe seat. I have to leave my seat to run for mayor, and that's because my seat is running concurrently with the mayor's seat. So if I lose, I go home. And so I have taken that risk, and I have put all my cards on the table because I believe that the vision I have for this city is bankable. I am banking on my vision to take this city into the 21st century. My vision for Hayward uh, includes affirming our city's diversity and all of the virtues that come with a diverse city. My vision includes a, safe, a safer neighborhoods and police officers that are allies with families and business owners. My vision for Hayward uh, includes making it easier to open a business in Hayward. And, open, and once open, my vision includes that Hayward businesses hire Hayward first. 
My vision also includes an institution that has never been included in the vision development of this city, and that is the schoolhouse. The vision that I am proposing includes squarely the schoolhouse. Our academic institutions will be the driving force of our city's reputation. Our academic institutions will be the driving force for our city's innovation. And our academic institutions will be the driving force for our city's economic strength in the 21st century. I am proud to announce the endorsement of my mom, sitting right here in front of me. <laughs> I am proud to announce the endorsement of my wife, who's also here, and my in-laws. <laughs> I'm also proud to announce the endorsement of uh, the sheriff, Alameda County Sheriff Greg Ahern, the Chief of Police up at Cal State East Bay, Cheryl Boinkins. I've also been endorsed by both mayors on both sides of us, our mayor of Union City and our mayor of San Leandro. I'm proud to endorse or announce that I've been endorsed by uh, Alameda County Office trustees and Hayward School Board members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Holliday? Well, I really want to thank APAPA and Hayward Neighborhood Alert for hosting this event and for all of you who cared enough to come out here tonight, ask great questions. It's been a good evening. Um, I, too, am honored to have endorsements from a lot of people throughout this entire city, including two of my current colleagues, in fact, the only two council members who are not on the ballot this year, uh, Council Member Al Mendel and Council Member Greg Jones. Um, the mayor needs to be someone who can bring this council together, and I like to think that I will be that person. Um, I have um, two... Two of my former colleagues also, um, uh, Kevin Dowling and Doris Rodriguez, um, Sheriff Emeritus Charlie Plummer, a very notable person, um, the head of the NAACP, NAACP uh, Freddie Davis. Um, I'm very honored to have the endorsement of the Hayward Mobile Homeowners Association and its president, Kathy Morris, and I, I could go on. But in the meantime, I really want to say that um, we do have challenges and I believe I have the experience and qualifications to meet those challenges. Um, we need to continue being fiscally prudent, um, but at the same time, it will be a high priority of mine to resolve the current disputes we are having with some of our workers and restore employee morale. Um, building our economy in a way that fits in the 21st century um, will help us to do that. But I will say, no one person, no one mayor, or even the city council alone can do this um, by themselves. We need the help of everybody in Hayward. And I think about that wonderful directive that President Kennedy gave us at his inauguration when he said, well, we know what he said. If you apply that to Hayward, I would not ask any of you to ask not what your city can do for you, because we are a service organization, and that is what we're here to do, and we need to hear from you about what you want and need. But I would ask all of you to ask what you can do for your city. We all have unique talents, skills, abilities. If we all contribute, this city can be the best in the Bay Area. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now's the time to please applaud all of our candidates tonight. I'd like to turn this over to Joe Wong with a quick announcement. Okay, um, you're not going to get away with our one-minute commercial, okay? <laughs> APAPA is a nonprofit Asian Pacific American Islander organization, and we can do our work because of, of, of our volunteers and our sponsors. We tell our sponsor, for every dollar you gave us, we give you four dollars of work, okay? So we want to form... Uh, Thank Comcast, Sugar Bowl, Yin's Foundation. Mr. C.C. Yin is the founder of Papa. He's using the money he made with 30 McDonald's to support Papa. so we thank them. Chevron, AT&T, Wells Fargo, PG&E, Verizon, and also Dr. Sinkong and Sandy Chow, who are big supporters of Papa. Uh, previews of coming attraction. On Wednesday, April 9th, uh, we're going to have a debate 
for the people that are running for congressional offices in California. And I want to introduce Councilwoman from uh, Fremont, Su Chen, uh, who will be helping us to host that event. And on Friday, uh, May the 2nd, we're going to, in this same place, we're going to feature candidates that are running the 50, 15 congressional district candidates, okay? Uh, the state senate. The state senate. I'm, I'm, okay. April 9th. April, okay. Uh, that threw me off a little bit. Uh, I thank you all for coming, and uh, of course we want to uh, thank our neighbors, uh, Hayward Neighborhood Alert, uh, for co-sponsoring this event. Thank you very much. In, in closing. In closing, I'd like to thank all of you for spending this evening with us. You could be home watching the A's game, uh, but you're here, so thank you so much. Before you leave this building, you may want to stop by Snappy's Cafe. They'll be here until 8.45 with some hot coffee and refreshments. And stop by the uh, Papa table as well as the uh, Hayward Neighborhood Alert table as well. Thank you very much. We enjoyed uh, this. One evening. other thing. Hope you would all sign up for Papa membership. You don't have to be Asian to be a Papa member. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.